2011, uh, almost uh, 10 years. And um, I'm also an acupuncturist physician. So I studied at the Barbara Brennan School of Healing. And um, I have been uh, working uh, since then, since I graduated. And this lecture uh, came up to me and it totally transformed the way I uh, am in a relationship. It's helped me tremendously. Um, but before we start, I would like to uh, invite you, you know, we have this, um, we have opened this foundation for people that would like to donate, uh, make donations for the people that are in need uh, due to the pandemic. And uh, you see there's a, uh, a web page here that you can click and you can make your donations. And we would appreciate that very much. Thank you. So uh, today we're going to be discussing, you know, these three forces that are uh, principal elements in a relationship. And uh, we're going to discuss the erotic force and how to keep it alive in a relationship that seems to evaporate with uh, time and habit. So uh, how can we maintain this spark in a relationship? And then we're going to discuss uh, the force of love. Uh, what is the difference between eros and love? and the sex force. So the spiritual meaning of eros. Eros is something similar to passion, you know, with this uh, attraction that we feel for somebody, you know, at the beginning of a relationship. That, you know, we can't wait to see the person. Suddenly, you know, we have this chemistry, this attraction. We want to talk, we talk for hours, we want to share everything. So uh, it's a very potent force in existence because it brings two people together. You know, we have this in nature in which even if we want to be separate, we want to be single, at some point in our life, we're going to feel this attraction to somebody. And this is good because it brings us out of separation, out of being single into our relationship. Eros is supposed to serve as a bridge between sex and love. So. Uh, it's supposed to help a human being move from just the mere aspect of procreation, of having sex, to feeling something more for the other. And then in the next stage will be to learn how to love the other. But it rarely does. In a, a spiritually highly developed person, it carries the person from the erotic experience, which in itself is of a short duration, into the permanent state of pure love. But eros will carry us so far and it dissolves if the personality doesn't learn how to love. This is crucial. You know, at the beginning of a relationship, everything is fine. You know, we, we're so happy. This is an adventure to get to know this person. Uh, but we always fear, you know, how long will this last? So guess what? This will last as long as we learn how to uh, truly and deeply love. And we, could, we, we are confused about uh, the difference between eros and love because eros has uh, many ways that are very similar to love. So it brings us impulses of being unselfish and impulses of affection. We want to buy flour, expensive dinners trips. At the beginning we have this, ah, I want to do everything with this person. So it is confused with, with love. So the spiritual meaning of arrows. Without arrows, many people would never experience the great feeling and beauty that is contained in real love. Because let's face it, relationships are difficult, you know, they, they press our buttons sometimes. You know, the beginning is good, but suddenly, you know, it's requiring us for attention and for us to open up and, and share feelings. For those people that are fearful about opening up, they would stay at home, locked in their apartments. But when errors hits us, you know, it forces us to be in a relationship. 
So for these people, they would never get the taste and their yearning for love would remain deeply submerged in their souls. So Eros is the nearest to love the undeveloped spirit can experience. And Eros gives the soul the taste of unity. You know, it makes you feel, ah, wow. If this, if Eros is love, what is, what will I find in deep love? Even a criminal will temporarily feel a goodness he has never known. So we all have that possibility, at least once, once or twice, or some people more in a lifetime, we will have this hit. We will find this connection, this chemistry, this suddenly aha moment for somebody. So now we've we've touched a little bit of what eros is and how different it is, different it is from love. We're going to see how what is love. So I was thinking today, how can I explain them? What is love? What is we all know what is love, but uh, I wanted to bring a different way. You know, when we see a, a little baby, you know, we look at the baby and we can't stop staring at the baby. We want to be with the baby. We want to hug the baby. We want to smell the baby, everything. We, we love babies, for well, most of us. Um, so the baby comes into this world, it's pure light, shiny. And uh, with the years, you know, the baby starts getting upset and, and irritated and some of the parental voices start kicking in and suddenly, you know, we, the baby loses that brilliance, that the capacity to, to emanate love. And, and that happens to us too, you know? We are love, you know? There's love inside of us, but we have so many layers that have been piling up for so many decades that at some point we forget. Love is a permanent state in the soul, but it can only exist if the foundation for it is prepared through development and purification. Love is not like arrows that comes and go. It's always there. Only if the spirit is prepared to love and has built the foundation for it, will arrows be the bridge to the love that is manifested between a man and a woman. So love is within us, but it comes with purification, with work. You know, it comes by peeling off, by opening up, by letting go of some of the grudges, some of the stories that have been piling up, some of the emotions that are stuck in our energy field, in our bodies. We're locked in an apartment when we've been heartbroken, or we lost somebody so dearly in our lives. And we don't want, again, to experience relationships. We don't want to experience the loss again, the, the breakup anymore. So we locked ourselves up. But one day we go to the supermarket, somebody goes by and back, looks, looks at, at, us, at us and gives us a smile. Oh, do you want to go for a coffee? Oh, yes. Something about this person. Eros strikes you again and brings you out of the separation into another relationship for you to learn how to find more love in yourself and in the other. As long as the soul is separate, loneliness and unhappiness must be its lot. When we're not in this human body anymore, I believe that we go, our energy, our light expands again into everything. We become love again. Now we are this amazing being of light, 30,000 trillions of cells put together with all these systems. You know, we can see, we can talk, we can listen, we can move dance, feel pain, angry, sadness. We are this amazing being of light. We are pure love. But we, some, someday we say, oh, I'm not good enough. My mother said this, my father said that. And we start to forget. And we lock ourselves in the apartment of our new life until nature gives us the spark of arrows again and gives us another chance to open the heart up and to feel vulnerable, vulnerable again and share with our life with somebody else. So we remember through arrows. 
In the Earth sphere, Eros, Eros is a propelling power for us to learn how to love. It is often misused and enjoy for its own sake. So for some of us, we don't know how to, how to love. So as we feel Eros, but we're not willing to learn how to love. So we look for one subject after another, emotionally too ignorant to understand the, the deep meaning of errors. Some of us are unwilling to learn pure love and simply we use the erotic force for their pleasure and when it's worn out, we hunt elsewhere. One marriage, two marriages, three marriages, four marriages, five marriages, different relationships. At the beginning, everything is good, but we don't know how to love and to open up and to how to share and how to really look inside. And suddenly we start losing interest. And when Eros leaves, next, next, next. But Eros is medicine for those fear-ridden souls that resist the experience. People who are afraid, oh, sorry, I have problem with the battery. Hold on a second. Got it, resolved. My computer wasn't charged. So um, for those people that fear the, the connection, you know, Eros is, is very good. People who are afraid of their emotions in life will often do anything to avoid the great experience of unity. But there are those who are not afraid of the experience and the beauty is a great temptation and therefore they hunt greedily for it. But they go in the superficial uh, way. They don't jump in completely and they open themselves and they share themselves. They go, yeah, I'm going to come here, but I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to share too much. Let's just have a relationship, maybe long distance, or you know, I'm not going to show my emotions because we are afraid of the experience. We don't want to get hurt. So then we have uh, the erotic principle, the meaning of love, and then we know the sex force. These are three very important elements in a relationship. The sex force is to procreate, procreate you know, to feel physical pleasure, but the pure sex, is, uh, sex force is utterly selfish. Sex without arrows and love is referred as animalistic sometimes. Pure sex is in all living animals, plants, and miner minerals. But errors begins with a stage of development where the soul is incarnated as a human. And pure love is to be found in the higher spiritual realm. So we have sex, and we have errors, and then we have love. The more the three forces remain separate, the unhealthier the personality is. So it's a good way to measure, if you're in a relationship, how healthy your relationship is. How well are these three elements uh, in that relationship? Is, can you feel eros, this attraction, this adventure in the relationship? Is a sexual relationship good? Can you really find love and feel love for the other? And it's very important to notice that when error starts to leave because the personality doesn't want to do anything to find deeper aspects of the other person and learn how to love, the sexual relationship is the next one to suffer. And this is a problem with most marriages. So sometimes in a relationship you have love and errors and sexual uh, relationship is not very good. Sometimes uh, we have uh, errors and sex without love. Sometimes we have errors and love without sex. But only in the ideal case do all three forces mingle harmoniously. 
So marriage and the spark of Eros. I'm here I'm talking about marriage, about relationships in general. How to maintain the spark in the relationship that seems to evaporate with habit and familiarity? How do we keep Eros? Well, this is key. And I'm going to say it very slowly and then I'm going to explain it to you. Eros can be maintained only if it is used as a bridge to true partnership in love in the highest sense. Only if it is used as a bridge to true partnership in love in the highest sense. Meaning if you go into the relationship with just one feet and you don't, you're not so sure, yeah. You don't want to jump in. It's going to be difficult to maintain that passion that at least at the beginning of a relationship you have. And that passion can last about a year and a half, two years, sometimes three years. But then that is going to start to disappear. If you don't learn how to be in the relationship uh, fully. How do we do this? How do we keep errors? The erotic force is like an adventure. It's a search for the other soul. Eros strengthens the curiosity to know another human being. You know, you, you want to know everything about the other person at the beginning. Tell me more. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your work. Tell me about your hobbies. I want to know every little inch about you. This is how we feel, and, and we want to share everything that we have. And to write checks, you know, write a contract. Yes, I want to be with you for the rest of your life. And we think that is love. Sometimes I meet a friend and they're glowing and asking, what's going on? You look wonderful. I'm in love. I just met this person. And we're getting married. Well, it's, it's errors. It's not love. It's different. So I usually say, well, take your time. You know, it, it takes time, time to get to know the other. But at least Eros is there. So that curiosity, that adventure, the key to keep Eros is that as long as there is something new to find in the other soul, and as long as you reveal yourself, Eros will leave. live. Sorry, Eros will live. But the moment we believe you have found all there is to find and have revealed all there is, errors will leave. You know, we all go get into that trap. At some point, you know, everything is good, but at some point something happens that we say, okay, I already know the other person. The other person is never going to change. You're always going to be late. And we start retrieving, we start withdrawing, start building some of the layers of separation. So the great error comes to believe there is a limit to the revealing of any soul. We decide, okay, I already know you. This is me. I'm never going to change. So you hit a superficial revelation on or under the impression that this is all there is. And settle down to a placid life without further searching. So we make the decision and we get stuck there. So I have to say, you know, uh, we're a soul in a human body, and we're always changing. We are like a universe, always shifting. I was not this. I'm not the same person that I was a month ago. I'm always shifting, always changing. And the one that you're with, or that you're going to meet, is the same. We are infinite. So if you, we don't learn, don't learn how to love, you know, we, uh, Eros carries you so far with a strong impact. But after that point, your will to further search the depth of the other person and voluntarily reveal and share your own inward search determines whether you have used Eros as a bridge to love. This is always determined by uh, your will to learn how to love. And when I learned, when I saw this, I said, wow, that's what I want. 
I want to learn how to love. I don't want to be jumping from one relationship to the other and having to start again and, and going through another breakup and going and and losing the arrows, losing the attraction, and then the sexual relationship gets messed up. And then, you know, I want to really learn how to keep loving the other person, keep renewing the relationship. So only in this way you will continue to find the other and let yourself be found and maintain the spark of eros. There is no limit for the soul is endless and eternal. A whole lifetime would not suffice to know it. This is when I learned, okay, there are some religions that say only one marriage is suffice. You know, if you do the work, if you keep there, if you keep if revealing yourself, of course, I'm going to explain how what are what are the keys to to be able to do that a marriage can last a long time a relationship can last a long time it will never degenerate to a dead end if people had wisdom they would make marriage the marvelous journey of adventure it is supposed to be finding new levels instead of being carried as far as you're taking by the first momentum of errors then you will have brought arrows into true, true love. So let's, let's examine now how is arrows different from love. We already covered that, the sex force, marriage and the spark of arrows. How do you keep arrows alive? What is marriage? Marriage, the divine purpose of marriage is not merely procreation. It is to enable the soul to reveal itself and to be constantly on the search for the other and to discover new levels of the other being. The more this happens, the happier, more firmly, safely, rooted, and the less in danger the marriage will be of an unhappy ending. And when I started to give this lecture, I was like, wow, this is a great lecture. I love it. And ironically, I was in a relationship, in, in an abusive relationship, and I was suddenly experiencing infidelity. And I wanted to just put this lecture aside and run from the Carolyn. I didn't want to give the lecture. And, or I just, sometimes I thought, well, maybe you can go and just give the lecture. But uh, I wanted to really go to war. And uh, I was, uh, so uh, so hurt that I wanted to um, just go to war and, and and judge the other person and, and almost you know kill. And uh, but I said no, I'm giving this lecture, so I don't know how to do it. Of course, I I I, I asked for help, professional help. But the first thing that I decided to do is. I decided to sit in front of the person and I said, uh, you know, I'm so angry, I'm so sad, and I'm so like disappointed. And um, I started to cry and to just to feel my anger. And I was looking at the other person and the other person was looking at me and was saying, oh, wow, I, I was waiting for this. And in an instant, I realized that I uh, had entered the relationship of this healer, you know, this superior person. I never came down to the relationship in the, at the same level. And uh, I was finally, and for the first time, showing my humanness, you know, showing my pain to the other person. And after I cried, you know, I felt this deep love for myself, this compassion for myself. And of course, this brought us together again because I was, I was first in my pedestal, you know, I was this uh, healer, and then finally I was, uh, I was uh, coming down to the level of a human being, and then the sexual relationship started to get much better, and I started to feel a love and an honesty for myself that I couldn't find before. And of course, I, I got help. I started to work on the issues that I had with my previous relationships, the wounds that I had in, in my past. And with that came the relationship with my mother and the relationship with my father. 
And some of the attitudes that I had in going to relationships, I always wanted to fix the other and show that I'm better than you. I'm more evolved. You listen to me, you follow me. I I had this, this mask. And of course, the other person was not buying this and was going out of the relationship to find that connection with somebody else. As long as I would find the connection with myself, the relationships would start to get better. But in in practice, marriage hardly ever works that way. You reach a certain level of familiarity and habit and think you know the other. The search for the other being as well as for self-revelation requires inner activity and alertness. But people are tempted to inner inactivity. While outer activities come overcompensated, they enter the illusion that they already know each other fully. This is the beginning of the end, or best a compromise to turn the relationship static. Like me, you know, I already know you have all these problems and I will heal you, but I was just looking in the outside. I was not looking inside of me. It's not alive, even though it may have some very pleasant features. As the year goes by, people face two possibilities. Either one or both partners become openly and consciously dissatisfied for the soul needs to surge ahead, to find and to be found. The dissatisfaction is conscious or ignored. Or when the marriage is then disrupted, when one or both partners will think that if they find new partners, things will be better, will be different. Because Eros has subsided, the sexual relationship is not working anymore, we don't know how to find love, things are stuck. Maybe if I find something at work or outside, a new relationship. That's one of the possibilities, to find a new relationship, but if you don't learn how to love, the new cycle will start. Or some partners remain together and may may certainly fulfill something together. But a great and fulfilled need will always lurk in their souls. When compromises chose, both stagnate at least in the aspect of their soul development. You know, to be together, sometimes we have friendship and we have a nice house, we pay the bills. We have the children going to to school. We respect each other. But an important element of the relationship is missing, the revealing of soul to soul as much as possible. Only when two people do this, they can be purified together and thus help each other. Today, I'm very careful. Uh, I have moved from that relationship to uh, so much better relationship in which uh, I am always looking to see where is it that I'm uh, starting to feel the same superiority? Where is it that I'm not sharing? Uh, and uh, I decide to sit down and hold hands and look into the eyes and feel vulnerable again and say, this is how I feel right now. And I'm not very comfortable. This is what is happening through me. I don't know if if this is real. Um, And I share everything that I can. Because I don't want, I know that if I don't do that, if I start blocking myself, and also I go to therapy and I I go to to programs to keep peeling off these blockages. Only when two people do this, they can be purified together and thus help each other by searching the depth of the other souls and revealing themselves, the life spark is maintained so that the the relationship can never stagnate and degenerate into a dead end. Not only you maintain errors, that vibrating life force, but you also transform it into love. It's not easy because we tend to try to shut down and not feel anymore and, and get behind the phone or the newspaper and just maintain the habit, the the life that we have. 
to do this, it requires a lot of courage, a lot of work, and somebody outside of you that will be, be able to see where is it that you're uh, blocking yourself? Where is it that you don't want to open your heart and, 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 and share? Only in true partnership of love and eros can you discover in your partner new levels and yourself be purified by putting away your pride and revealing yourself as you really are. I had to accept that I, I was uh, not in the relationship. I was in the relationship as a superior one with a mask of I'm good, just follow me. I needed to, to open up and realize that I was in this narcissistic uh, defense. And when I would do that, our relationship would get better. You know, it would renew itself. Love will, was uh, started to increase and sex, the sex relationship was better again. Your relationship will always be new, but all masks must fall, not only the superficial, but the real ones. Then your love will remain alive. You will never have to search elsewhere. And you will never have to be afraid of losing the love of your beloved unless you refrain from risking the journey of self-revelation uh, together. You know, as long as you, you are in the relationship uh, with, with that uh, intention to do that kind of work, the other one has what it needs. You know, the other one will, will, will very uh, likely not leave because what we need is to be, sh be sharing from, from heart to heart, from soul to soul. This is marriage in its true sense and the only way it can be the glory it is supposed to be. But there must be an unwillingness to risk the journey and adventure of revealing yourself. You have to discover your fear of the great adventurous journey with another, which may explain why you might be alone. But to do that, a certain emotional and spiritual maturity has to exist. The choice of the partner who is unwilling comes out of the hidden fear of undertaking the journey yourself. You know, you magnetically draw people toward you which correspond to your subconscious and fears. I was in the relationship that I needed to be. Um, eventually, I moved to another relationship. I stayed three more years after that, dealing with all the issues that I that I that I had. And finally, I was able to move to a to a different relationship, a much healthier relationship. And I didn't want to keep jumping, so I decided to stay and really take a good look at myself. Humanity is far away from this ideal but that does not change the idea or ideal. In the meantime, you have to learn to make the best of it. Whatever your situation is, whether you have a partner or are alone, search your heart and it will furnish you the answer to your conflict. It must come from within yourself and it will relate your own fear and willingness and ignorance of the facts. God's purpose in partnership of love is a complete and mutual revelation of one soul to another, not just a partial revelation. Understand how important the erotic principle is in your sphere. It is what you call falling in love or romance. There are many tools that we have to help you uh, peel off those layers. Of course, if, if you've been 20 years in a relationship and you never did any work, there's more work to do, but it is possible when you start peeling off and pressing delete and letting go and seeing all the stagnation of stories, of grudges that, that have been piling off through the years, your heart will start opening. And with that, you know, the curiosity to share with the other, the strength to let you open and, and, and let you be vulnerable again. And you will find errors again. And the sexual relationship will, 
will be great again. And at the end, what you're doing is you're experiencing more of your humanity, your deep love, the deep love, love that is who you truly are. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's been a, a great pleasure to, to be here today. Let's see if we have any questions. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Oh, before I end, um, you know, I, in this pandemic uh, times, you know, I offer long distance sessions to help you with any type of relationship, if, even if you have issues in relating to yourself. Um, not only we work on uh, with your mind and your emotions, but I also do long distance healing in which you lay down in the comfort of your home and I work energetically. Uh, I move towards energetically where you are and uh, we can do uh, a lot of uh, great work there. But if not, you know, I'll, uh, I can assist you through long distance. Too. Also remember to donate if you can. Here's the page again. And let's see if you have any, any questions. How do you move back into a passionate relationship with someone that you love, but have gone sideways and many, many, many years of comfort in the relationship? Well, as I was saying, you know, it's, it depends on how much work have you done. Uh, but I can assure you, I have an am amazing tools that uh, can help you uh, release and peel off uh, a lot of those layers. And uh, I have people coming to me in two hours, you know, they come so angry at the other person, just wanting to get a divorce and, and never see the person again. And at the end of the session, you know, when the mind shatters, all the thoughts that, and stories that we have about the other shatters, and then our, the heart opens. And they just, I ask them, so what do you feel about John or about uh, Ellen? Oh, and they say, usually people say, oh, I just feel love. I just want to call them. So it is possible and it's quick. This is quick. But of course, if 20 years of like war, then it will take more time. But we can do it if your determination to heal uh, and your intention is strong. So from Sarah, is it important for people to understand the difference between errors and love in order to have a healthy relationship? I think it's very helpful because, you know, with these holiday movies, we, we get into the trap that love is errors. No, love is be able to is a lot deeper than Eros. Eros is just the impulse for you to start the relationship and share at the beginning. But love is to be found with relationship of, of trust, of uh, going walking together through the hardships, through the difficult times when we don't get along, when we have issues, and staying there and opening up your heart and saying, hey, I'm here. Let's, let's sit together and discuss this. I'm going to be open and I'm going to look for help outside the relationship. So, so it's, it's very different. Once you understand the difference, then it's much easier to build a healthy relationship. From Sarah again, how can we work towards allowing ourselves to feel our emotions? Yeah, emotions are very important. And we try to run away from them and we suppress them for so many years. You know, we suppress anger in the liver, we suppress uh, sadness and, and, and uh, uh, yeah, sadness in the lungs, we suppress, suppress fear in the kidneys, and uh, we become very good at suppressing the emotions. That's why I'm here, I'm an energy healer. I, I have studied many years to help people, you know, open up their relationships, um, sorry, open up the relationships and open up their emotions and bring the person down into their bodies to be able to feel 
and purge some of the anger, sadness, grief, worry, etc. We look at the mind, we look at emotions, we look at the spirit, we look at the beliefs inside. It's fascinating. It's one of the best investments that you can do in yourself. Uh, and it will uh, improve not only the relationship with uh, your uh, loved ones, but it will really improve the relationship with your children, with your workers, co-workers, with your bosses, etc. And ultimately, it will increase and improve the relationship to yourself. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for being here today. Um, I don't have any more questions. Uh, questions and feel free to uh, call me i don't know if you have that there um, here's my number and my email address that you can you can go back i'm going to be sending you a copy of this presentation and you can get my information there to call me if you need any further assistance again thank you for your presence please be safe and be patient. You know, everything passes. This will pass. And humanity is moving to a much better place. I want to send love to all of you. Bye-bye.